nearby was Captain Fold. Simpson Hill House of Simpson Hill. Roacre Brook flows by here. It was down towards Vale Mill. There was Vale Mill Cottage. Roacre is probably an acre of land or area from ancient times. You probably have so many oxen and etc. etc. And it's in the middle, a bit like Castle Hill over in Bertle. So it's from ancient times, an acre, a row acre. Uh, now it's Rochdale Road East. Harefield Farm is visible. Well, its old wall is there. It's in a field. We'll try and get a shot of just the wall. Chadwick Lane and is now Chadwick Street. It's still navigable. I think I pronounced that correctly. There was a large gravel pit. Uh, the border for Haywood, Hopwood, Rochdale and Castleton all meet at the large gravel pit. That's probably why it's all gravel. Everything's been fought over so much. Think about that for a moment. So there's Albert Street, Alexander Street and Partington Street. They still exist at the end of Chadwick Lane and they did exist back in 1798. When the Rochdale Canal was running, so the locks at Castleton were there, but the branch canal to Haywood hadn't been built back then. Uh, Haywood Old Road connects to Chadwick Lane, so that the canal probably followed along those, I should imagine. Uh, the Haywood branch actually connects at Trub, so it goes up a lot gate, we'll see. So there's two to connect it to the Rochdale main canal. Haywood Old Road goes past two old churches and Buckley Barn Farm Railway Brow is all that remains a little road but Railway Brow was a farm and Buckley Barn Farm was there so Fenton Street Canal Street and Castleton Iron Works, Size Works and Hart Mill. They were all in this area. That modern that mill that we can see over the way will be one of those. The Arrow Mill that's here. Um, there was March Barn. Which became this warehouse. Who even goes up there? For any reason. Bow Street off Queensway was March Bridge to Castleton Road. Um, Castleton Road clay pits for the brickworks off Lothian Street. 
who are also in this area that are gone. Uh, we're going to walk down over March Bridge. We'll see that that's still in existence, but it links differently at the other end now. We used to go through that warehouse, Let's walk down slowly. This is the point. Uh, we'll see Crestor Mill. That's the large one. But we're coming up to a point where Garel's farm would have been. Railway uh, will be the modern road. That was the farm lane. Also, Garel's bridge is gone. Yeah, we'll see a concrete structure built in with the. It's the slip road for the Edinburgh Way dual carriageway. And it's all part of the upgrade from the motorways in the Manchester area. So the more we rely on robots, of course a robot doesn't have to be humanoid in form. A car can be a robot if it can drive itself. It doesn't have to look like a human. That's something we will probably do, put faces on things. We'll invent a robot that can drive a car, then we'll take the robot away and make the car drive itself. These are the sort of things that we can work out you know, quickly these days. It used to take a long time to evolve. No iron bridges get thinner and thinner and then steel bridges come along. Now we just work straight to the quickest, easiest, cheapest route very quickly. But the more we worry about being replaced, 72% of Americans believe or worry humans will lose their jobs to robots, which becomes a very complicated issue, which is more economics and mathematics. But I do know a bit about those things. And it does become very complicated if robots take over. How will anybody earn money? So how will they spend money? So what will you need robots for? It's like a paradox. Indeed, without money, we won't be able to develop and build robots. Uh, in one Chinese province, two million workers were actually replaced by robots. In just under two years, robots are even in our hospitals. Around 5,000 Da Vinci surgical arms operate on patients around the world every day. Although 69% of Americans are also uncomfortable with the robot surgeons. I keep saying Americans because the studies have taken place in America. That's where Silicon Valley is based, Google, Facebook and of course YouTube. Our favourite. So they build cars, they design ones that can work in warehouses, some can run up and down stairs. So as robots get smarter, they'll get faster, they'll get stronger, and they will improve our lives. We will need more of them. So, like the canals, will humanity become redundant? And robots literally evolve into the next intelligent life form, or non-life form. Indeed, servants are masters. So as I said, anything important pops up, I'll try to explain. So we've just gone past our own mill. This is a part where the original canal used to go off where that bully warehouse is. But there's a slip road for the motorway and a culvert redirects it. So it was shut down in the 50s, reopened in the 80s. Uh, 
um, film the culvert, got to jump over where there's no footpath, towpath, and then we'll be carrying on towards Rochdale. We're almost there. Also worth noting. Is, uh, this is how the water would have gone through the motorway before the canal was reopened. That little tiny culvert there. Now, it travels through there. One computer scientist at MIT became so disillusioned that he decided to build a computer program that would parody these hopeless attempts. He was called Joseph Weisenberg. He built what he claimed was a computer psychotherapist. Just like a therapist, people could come and talk to the machine by, by typing, typing in, in their problems. Weisenbaum called the program Eliza. He modeled it on a real psychotherapist called Carl Rogers, who was famous for simply repeating back to the patient what they had just said. And that is what Eliza did. The patient sat in front of the screen and typed in what they were feeling. And the program repeated it back to them, often in the form of a question. Men are all alike. In what way? They're always bugging us about something or other. Can you think of a specific example? Well, my boyfriend made me come here. Your boyfriend made you come here? He says um, I'm depressed much of the time. I'm sorry to hear that you're depressed. It's true. I am unhappy. Do you think coming here will help you not to be unhappy? I need some help. That much that is certain. One of the first people to use Eliza was Weisenbaum's secretary. So, it's got to shoot out the woods this way. Not one day. Hopefully you'll be able to uh, program a drone to follow this canal. And film it for you. Until then, some walking to do. We still only covered a very small section, you know. Not just today, all together. Yeah. Anyway, Manchester UK, brief videos of time. I'm Stephen got out. Doc. And she began to type, and of course I looked over her shoulder to make sure that everything was operating properly. After two or three interchanges with the, with the machine, she turned to me and she said, would you mind leaving the room, please? And yet she knew, as Weisenbaum did, that Eliza didn't understand a single word that they typed. By the 1990s, computers become far more powerful and AI gets smarter. IBM developed Deep Blue, a supercomputer teaching it to play chess. In 1997, Deep Blue challenges Grandmaster Garry Kasparov, the Michael Jordan of chess. He's shaking his head as if something disastrous has happened. Kasparov, after the move C4, has resigned. It's a landmark moment. A human has been outthought by a computer, and those computers are getting smarter by the minute. I'm into electronics, robotics, as I'm into physics, and that's why I decided to explain myself instead of sounding like someone who said something silly. So, there was a race, I think it's three years ago they started this race, across the desert. Not sure which desert, it's in America. Anyway. There's a race between 10 cars and no drivers involved whatsoever. It's like a six hour race. You set your car off, program it, and you wait at the other end. You are not allowed to interfere with the vehicle in any way. I think three cars actually made it. Stanford University's car set a world record. Funnily enough, I remember that car because it was called Stanley, and my father was, and my grandfather. How man, Cuny that. 
Yep, so anyway, it's inevitable to a person like me. This is a fact, definite fact. In 50 years from now, cars will drive themselves. So we've gone through, we've talked about robots, had our little break, seen some concrete in the old fashioned structure of the canal, which will now go back to the old fashioned fittings and the way it used to look as we get past Rochdale. Uh, Valley Ring Mill was along this way. Hartley Bridge is still here, but was stone. I think it might still be a stone bridge. You have to go up over the canal and down the other side. It's always been that way. Uh, it's a horse bridge and pedestrians. So the towpath flips over from one side to another to allow for the branch canal of Haywood. And there'll be another one for Rochdale. That's why it flips over again. The towpath does remain on the same side usually on both canals, but it, it does have to switch around when you have a branch coming in or a swing bridge. So it was stone before, might be concrete, um, but the canal was closed in the 1950s. I just want to show the overflow. It's an important part, as I said. That's for flooding and draining the canal. And you put boards on either side and you can drain sections uh, down into Sudden Brook. Uh, another mill, Dicking Green Lane. Uh, there was another old lane and bridge. Most people's reaction to change is one of, oh, no way, and oh, never, never, never. Today, we lose 43,000 people just on American roads in traffic accidents. I think that's each year. So 43,000 people a year are killed on the highway and in traffic accidents. Um, robots will eliminate that. To Lower Hay Mill, that's now Zen Internet Village. So there you go, there's two different worlds. And this concrete bridge, which has actually got sections of the old built in, it's been strengthened for the road. That's, what, that's why I thought it was up to, uh, updated. It's the last section, um, Milkstone Road, Well If Lane. There's another place around here. That means water on the road, <laughs> well in the lane, the well on that road, <laughs> well in the lane. Um, anyway, Milkstone was before an older Rochdale canal emerges. Um, the original branch basin is now unreachable because there's a mile over there that's now missing. You can still see bridges though, we'll have a look. As I said at the start, that an old fashioned style bridge, Penny Bridge, is the one we'll see. Another branch in Shadderton, Branch Canal, and that's um, another one just past this bridge here so the next two sections will include those links and penultimately Hollingworth Lake so finally we'll be a full walk over the Pennine Moors uh, that will conclude then we can you know do links via Castlefield Basin to Manchester Berry Bolton Canal final sections to look at Manchester Ship Canal and then possibly the world <laughs> who knows <laughs> so Manchester UK 
three videos at times and that's the end of Reach Rochdale through that tunnel it's Hollingworth Lake to the right hand side on the left there's another bridge and that would have been the Rochdale branch that links up to a basin about a mile in towards Rochdale perfect because we're getting twilight and that's the end of this section so that's brilliant point which is a, a good point if a car does go out of control and it has a robot driver and say it's careering towards a group of children outside of school and to its left are some old people to its right or a family having a nice day out how will the car decide what to do where to swerve who to hit that is a human thing isn't it i know that sounds like a horrible thing but will the car be programmed to choose a certain individual it's a very interesting point but most traffic Accidents are actually human error and computers don't make the same mistakes so I think it would actually go down you know the uh, fatalities incidentally it made the car industry in the UK which was nearly failing you know like 10% more efficient and everybody fought against having robots on the production line whereas Japan embraced it and everyone knows well you might know you might not know but Japanese cars you know the best cars in the world at one point in history uh, early 90s in the 80s they were really really doing well with robots helping them on the production line and then we brought them in after some debate and increased our output by 10 percent so we're at a lock and because we've got an echo i might as well film Myself as well. As I say, that's Hollingworth Lake up in that direction. And here we go with typical examples of how the canal is throughout its length. It's leaking. I think we can forgive them for a tiny leak. and back into a section of lock gates and the reason for that will be so it can start to rise up over the Pennines which is the part we're going to be filming now is that broke? Manchester there you go that's a lifetime ambition fulfilled, fulfilled there I'm actually really happy about that okay it's obviously free to do as it wishes because that's the lot small section I really did enjoy that almost too much peace out from a scientific point of view that's extremely light and easy to move
So I chose the wrong career path. Maybe I should work for Google, working on the mundane family car that drives itself. But unfortunately, I'm explaining this canal. So this was transport 230 years ago. When we're finishing Rochdale, that's actually 1870. The branch canal that was attached from Rochdale isn't um, like a later addition to the canal, it's part of, it was built in with the canal. There's an old bridge there that we're going to film, which would be like the three bridges I said are missing back in Haywood. Uh, Green Street, Canal Street and Water Street, all had bridges crossing over the canals. I'll show you what one of those would have looked like, because they would have been on every street really, a little bridge at the end. Uh, peace out Manchester, hope you enjoyed my playlists about the canals, thank you for watching, uh, please subscribe, please like. So we're at a lock, and because we've got an echo, I might as well film myself as well. As I said, that goes to Castleton, 